How's it going folks? Thought I'd do a little bit of a clip showing the hoop house area of our small urban farm here. Um, I've just finished doing one on the aquaponics and I thought I've got enough space left on the card to have a bit of a look. Um, also had a lot of people ask me how things are growing on. Um, I've been a little bit strapped for time lately. I just finished my PDC the other week. Woohoo! So that's taken up a fair amount of my time. Um, but here you go. Here's a bit of a look at one part of the place anyway. Um, First of all, we're in winter. Um, winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we're in subtropical southeast Queensland, so we have a pretty mild winter. We're actually growing things at the moment that I see friends in Canada and North America and Europe uh, grow through their summer at the moment, so we're very blessed indeed uh, to be in this climate. Um, minimums at night are around about average 6 degrees Celsius during winter here, and the daytime temperature average is around about 21. Um, we did have it drop to 0.9 degrees the other night, which is about 33 Fahrenheit. Um, didn't really affect much in the garden as such, but yeah, the fish felt it in the aquaponics a bit. Also too, we don't get frost here. Um, I think it's because of the position of the property. We're on a um, bit of a hill with a shed at the back and trees up the fence line, um, a coppicing Chinese elm trees. So I think they shield this section of the garden in particular a fair bit from frost, so we're very lucky with that. Um, so anyway, I'll stop nuttering on. Uh, we'll get up and we'll have a bit of a wander around the patch. So just down the entranceway here, we have our Okinawan spinach. Uh, it's doing fantastically well. Uh, it's not as big a leaf as the um, plants growing in the aquaponics, which is basically clones from this one. But this one here has been putting on a lot more flowers. We have a load of flowers um, developing on this plant. So hopefully we'll be able to collect some seeds and share them around with some friends um, and see if we can grow them from seed actually to begin with. They definitely grow really well from cuttings, but yeah, it would be fun to try from seed. Down here we have a bit of a polyculture bed going on. Um, <laughs> the bed was just uh, Bianca's honey pods peas, which are a snap pea up the back. And we've had all sorts of things pop up. There's some marigolds down the front there. The mustards though have been grown in there previously. And we've got a tomato, which I'm guessing will be one of the yellow currant tomatoes that pop up everywhere. And down the front here some mustard. And from out of nowhere, no idea how this got here, but we have a turmeric growing as well. So it'll be interesting to see um, what sort of a root system we get from that turmeric. So far we've been using a bit of the mustard, not a great deal in salads. Um, but the peas haven't really harvested many yet, just a few to snack on in the patch. But we do have some beautiful ones there that are well and truly ready for Bianca to come down and munch on. Um, I don't think many are going to make it into the house at the moment. Down here we have our turmeric barrel. Uh, well and truly ready for harvest. I've just let it die back this year. Give you some idea. Um, that's what it looks like. This is a paler variety than pre other uh, turmerics we've grown. But they're yeah, definitely ready to um, be pulling that one out of the barrel. Just there we have our little barricades <laughs> um, for the chooks. The chooks have been out a lot lately. So we've got to put something up to stop them from coming into the patch here. Next bed. Please excuse me if I'm losing my voice, I think I'm getting Bianca's cold. Um, down the bottom here we have our purple eggplant, we've got one there ready to come off. Um, it's put on another growth spurt, I fed it up with some um, compost tea, I've been using a lot of compost tea around the patch lately, and this thing's put on a phenomenal growth spurt. I have also left some fruit on here because I want to collect some seeds, I ran out of this stuff, I gave it all away in our seed sharing group. And the same here with the undumpelet. Um, I've got four on there because it seems to be a popular one. The fruit actually is purple and white uh, with a little bit of an orange tin. It's not normally this orange colour. So in this bed here we've also got, you know, the volunteer tomato pops up everywhere and a bit of a capsicum or sweet pepper. I'm just trying to overwinter. And some chook food. Chooks love these green herbaceous plants. So toss them over. There you go girls. Um, down here the chickens. The chickens have a tomato plant all to themselves. This is their tomato plant. I'll just stand back to give you some perspective. It grows over the top of the chicken coop. It's a broad ripple yellow currant and it has some awesome sized fruit on it. This stuff is growing so well. We'll see if we can zoom in, give you a decent look. I just dropped one and another one. Here we go, we'll pull him off. Awesome size fruit for a cherry tomato. Um, we've been eating them, the chickens have been eating them. Um, they're mainly here for the chickens, but you know, we'll take anything that comes our way. Uh, it's just growing out of the pavers down the bottom there, so you've got to love volunteer plants. I'll give you a look around the back. There's a bit of a back view of how it's growing up over the top of the chicken cage. It does need to come off though, because as you can see in there, it is fairly shaded. So these girls aren't getting a lot of sunlight in there. 
Uh, over the back, our turmeric has died off. Uh, that's in the front corner. Um, at the back, though, the gallangal is still rather green. Gallangal survives really well through our winters here, so that one will just keep growing. And down here, we have another gallangal bed. I've started this one off, and it's got some sweet potatoes growing in it, and I think there's a Cape gooseberry or two as well. Down on the ground here, more tomatoes. Um, sweet potato, it's a bit of a perennial here. Uh, comfrey, a massive comfrey clump. This stuff here, the greens are going into um, the next compost cage. I just need to finish taking the compost out. And then all these greens are going in there. Just down in here we have a Mexican tarragon plant. The flowers are pretty much well finished. It was covered, it was just a carpet of yellow and green. Um, but what we do have now is a whole heap of uh, flowers that have set seed. So we have thousands of these French tarragon seeds, oh sorry, Mexican tarragon seeds we can share around. Um, beautiful aniseed flavoured herb. I've been putting it in salads and bits and pieces. Goes down a tree. Over the back here, we have our blueberry. It's been a little bit neglected of late. Uh, we do have a couple of flowers set, so we will get some fruit, and there are some more buds forming, so hopefully we'll get another flush. Um, I pretty much will just neglected it. It hasn't been uh, fed up, so I'd say that could have something to do with it. Marigolds are still down there, though. Um, they're popping up everywhere. Just before we get into the hoop house, this is a Chinese elm. Um, this is all coming from a little stump on the ground there, um, growing through the fence line. So what we do is I chop it right back to the stump, and all this greenery and all the twigs and branches, they get mulched up and we use them to make compost. What it also does is, especially in winter, it clears the way for air to flow through as well as sunlight. Um, there's a whole heap of trees up there. I think there's four or five up the side there. All of them need to be done. It opens up this pathway and provides us with a load of compost, so that's another job that I've got on the list to do. Just in here we have a sea of warrigal greens. A lot of these plants are self-sown and we do have a few that have come back, especially over in that corner there. Um, they're just the old plant that's come back again. So we're going to have to start harvesting this stuff, um, blanching it and putting it in the freezer. So we've got a load of um, greens basically whenever we need it, frozen spinach. This red vein sorrel down the front here, um, it dies back every summer in the soil beds but flourishes in the aquaponics. Um, it's come back now in winter so we're going to have more than enough of this stuff. It's a great perennial to have in, in the ground. Um, there are other sorrels but this is the only one that we're growing at the moment. Just here we have a bit of a hodgepodge bed. We have some okra that went in too late and got hit with aphids. I've sprayed them once, they need another spraying just to knock them on the head. In this corner here we have a purple-headed cauliflower. It's coming on fairly well, can't complain. It's been sprayed once with Dipole, which is a BT um, caterpillar spray, and we haven't seen much of an infestation since then. Not on these guys anyway. Just in here, more okra. We have some um, self sown parsley. Um, this is where I collected the seeds for the plants in the aquaponics. Uh, we've got some more popping up over there, so pretty chuffed with that. Uh, also too, some um, snap peas, the honeypot peas. I popped a few down in here and forgot about them and yeah, I didn't sort of train them up the trellis unfortunately. Just over there, uh, comfrey barrel. That plant really needs to come out. I'm going to divide those root sections and plant them out the front under the new design. And a barrel full of <laughs> volunteer warrigal greens. I've already taken out uh, three lots and given them away to people, local people. Next bed, we have the turmeric that is dying off. This is a more orange colored turmeric and it needs to be harvested as well. More marigolds down the base there. The ginger, it's just keeping on, but yeah. I think we'll get a half decent yield. There's a couple of flowers down there. Whoops, a couple of flowers down there. Um, they didn't really eventuate too much, but yeah, the roots have grown uh, fairly dramatically this season. Just above it, we have our cherry tomato. I'm trying to grow to the four corners of the hoop house. Um, it's made it out this side, over here. Uh, just pan around slowly. Well, Bianca gets out of shot. <laughs> it's grown out to that end of the hoop house, so pretty chuffed with that. Load of fruit on there we can harvest and stew up. Down here we've got a bit of um, flat leaf Italian parsley, some more sweet basil going down the side there, and here we have the other summertime gold tomato. This one here has been hit with a bit of an um, infection, so I need to give them a bit of a fungicide spray. I'll probably just use the bicarb one, uh, the homemade one. This barrel here, another purple collie. Another one down there that's fallen over. Have to train him up. Down here we have our finger ginger. Um, this is a Chinese finger ginger or finger root, I think it's called. Um, fingers of um, root rhizome go straight down. 
This is the first year I'll be harvesting it. I've been told it tastes a little bit like a cross between um, ginger and galangal, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. It's used in a lot of um, Indo Indonesian uh, dishes from what I've been told. Just in this top bed, we've got five of our Glen Large garlic we planted out from last year. Um, Chinese red shallots from Jeff. Thank you again, mate. Um, we've been harvesting these, as you can see, as a salad cream, not really letting the bulbs grow. I had three Chinese cabbage or wombok here. Um, I harvested two the other day. They'd started to be hit by caterpillars, one by a caterpillar we don't normally see on the brassica, and the other one by the army caterpillars. The eggs are laid by a moth, and there's about a dozen or so that attack the cabbage at one time. Luckily, I caught it soon enough, and they're actually in the fridge ready to be eaten. And this one here, he was just left as a bit of a sacrificial crop, and he's actually not turning out too bad. The outside leaves have been hit by the cater um, caterpillars, the grasshoppers, as you can see there, but the inner leaves have been left alone. Volunteer potato, <laughs> some perennial leeks up there. Now onto our brassicas. Just in here we have a mix of cauliflower up the back. I figured I'll put the cauliflower up the back because they're out of the way. Um, there's a couple with little heads forming, another one over here from memory. So these guys need a spray with dipole uh, just to protect them against the cabbage moth because I haven't got the, um, as you can see, haven't got the shade cloth down on the hoop house this season. But yeah, I haven't seen a lot of damage on the leaves as you can see. Uh, along the front here I've got some broccoli. And more broccoli, this one's had to be held up by a tomato clip. And more collies along the back there. A bit of a mix there, we've got the white as well as the purple. And just along the front I've got a couple of collared plants. Just to compare them between the um, aquaponic ones for flavour, see how they go. But yeah, the, the brassicas really haven't performed as well as I thought they would. Mainly because I think I had the shade cover on for far too long. And they just got a little bit too leggy to begin with. Actually, we'll just do a quick pan to the bed behind me here. Um, more marigolds, some chickweed, I was like a chickweed over there I'm pulling out for the chickens, harvested that bit earlier. More green onions, just here we have a lettuce that is going to seed, going to save seeds from this fella. Um, we've got a couple that are already popping up down in there. More chook fodder there. And snake beans, we've got some snake beans that's um, self-sown there. I was planning to plant out snow peas there, never got around to it and the snake beans beat me so that's life I suppose. Just to finish off, I thought I'd just show you our um, grandma chili. This one's four or five years old. It's uh, one that someone gave me as I was leaving the markets. He said I look like someone who needed a chili. So I don't know the name, we just called it market chili. But I've cut it right back, so we only had that one growth point. And down here, we have new foliage appearing already. So it looks like it might survive another year. Just to show you the roots down here though. Very gnarly, a very old lady. Very gnarly, a little bit spongy. I don't know if she's going to make it, but we've got loads of seeds saved. Oh, just down in here, um, perennial leek, more of it. Um, this stuff will grow into a nice, large, thick stem, um, but I've just chopped them off like that and throw them in stir fries and things like that. Um, they don't need to be fat, and as you can see, they reproduce so fast. Um, there's a lot of young'uns in there, and all I need to do is take half this clump out and it'll be replaced within a month, so there you go. There's a bit of a tour of the greenhouse, how it sits at the moment, or the hoop house I should say. So there you go folks, there's a bit of a quick wander through the hoop house section. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, I haven't been posting a lot of clips, but I do have some more planned, a couple of harvest ones on the turmeric, the yakon when that happens, um, and also the ginger from the aquaponics, that's going to be an interesting harvest I think. Um, also just general other clips. I've just been really flat out with things behind the scene. Um, I'm a bit croaky, Bianca's been a bit crook. Uh, also too, I've handed in my PDC, I was working on that a fair bit as well. Um, that's the permaculture design certificate course I did. I had to hand in a submission. Uh, I based it on our property actually. So when I get my feedback sent back to me on the PDC, I'll actually post the submission that I sent through online. Um, I'll let you guys know through Facebook or Instagram or something. Um, and so you can check it out for those guys who are interested on the permaculture design. Um, over the next eight to 12 months, hopefully, there'll be dramatic changes on the layout of our whole property, or mainly the backyard. Just waiting for some money to fall from the skies to do some renovations on the house as well. Um, but I will pretty much all leave it there. Actually, there is one more thing. I would like to thank you. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and watching these clips. Um, I, I really do appreciate the feedback I get from you guys, the comments, the questions, the suggestions. Also too, the um, friendships that I've made through here. Um, I've chatted with a couple of you guys um, through Facebook and other places as well, and I really do appreciate, you know, um, just chatting about everyday bits and pieces. Uh, it, it does make life more enjoyable, I must say. So, 
I'll stop gushing and I will pretty much all leave it there. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, pop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Or you can leave them on our Facebook um, page or also to Instagram, links in the description below and I'll get back to you. But other than that, I hope everyone's well and happy and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks! Here's a bit of a look at what we've harvested today for you folks who stick around to the end. Broad ripple yellow currant tomatoes, honey pod peas, they're a snap pea, uh, the red cherry tomatoes, a couple of red tomatoes from up near the house, thanks Richard for the seeds again, a um, couple of eggplants, a couple of carrots from this barrel here I was talking about, I'll um, hopefully do a clip on, and a couple of cackle berries from a hidden bush down the back. So, hope you enjoyed that look folks. I know people like to see what we're picking. Cheers folks!